Father, we love the way you deal with us. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's, let's, let's begin to, to say this. Say, God's fixing me. And I am happy about it. Last week we talked about the dealings of God and we saw how God raised up the children of Israel to show us what to do and what not to do. So tell somebody I learned what to do. I, I can see y'all didn't really learn. <laughs> and I learned what not to do by looking at the children of Israel. Now what we want to look at today is how magnificent God is in his dealings. Now, the hard part about God is he's not human, but he has to be trusted. When you got saved, he killed the old you and hid the real you inside of Christ. But you still feel pain. That's the hard part. You still feel pain. You still feel disappointment. You still feel these things. But God wants you and I to get to a place where we trust him with our pain, knowing that it works. We saw last week that all things work together for good if you use them to get closer to God. Amen. Come on. If you don't use them the right way, they will not work together for good. Like I gave an analogy, if your mother died prematurely, that's not going to work for your good. But if you use that to say, I'm, I, I miss my mother, God said he'll be a mother and a father to me, let me get closer to God. Then it worked together for your good. But go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, and, and I, I want to give you a definition, and it's the word glory. Somebody say glory. glory. Now, glory is splendor. Anything that gives renown or reputation. See, splendor. It's like um, in Corinth. Corinth, they had hair. Right? Right? Corinth had hair. Where's Corinth? Corinth is in, where, they, where is that? They're in, um, they were in Asia Minor, where the women had hair. Hair, somebody say hair, hair. was very instrumental in giving off messages. And so the Bible said the, for, in Corinth, the woman's hair was her glory. See, her hair was her glory. And because of the head, the head had the hair on it. I'm gonna tell, come on, help me. I'm going to shock you or something. The head had hair, so that meant the glory was on top. And it said that the man shouldn't have his head covered because he is the glory of God. And it said the woman needed to have her head covered because of angels. So when angels see heads... They see authority. Somehow there's a light on your head. Do you ever notice how when they painted the pictures of Jesus, they always made him different. They put a little light over his head. So you see, the, the Bible says that the, the head of every woman is the man. Right? But, you know, they're talking in general, they're talking about a husband is the head of the wife. Right? Not the leader of the wife. Even though he will lead, but he's the head. When spirits are looking at wives, they look at the husband. Right? And when, when spirits are looking at you, they're looking at Christ. Because they said Christ is our head. And God is Christ's head. So when we're looking at the head, you're looking at the reputation. You're looking at the splendor. Most kings have to have a crown on their shoulder. See, she said yes, no. They have a crown on their head. See, so when they're looking at a head, they're trying to see your renown, your glory, and your splendor. They're trying to get an idea of your reputation. You and I were created for the glory of God. What God is doing to you and through you is so that the world will see God's reputation. So when they told the, the women in Corinth to wear their hair covered, it was because of the angels. Come on. 
And Paul ended up saying, if you think we're contentious, then no church has this custom. But there are still, there are still churches that keep that custom where they put dollies on their head. But the reality is the dolly can't hide the glory. Amen. Satan will see God in you. You put a dolly, a box, or whatever. If you're submitted to God, it will show on your head. And Paul got to the point, he was using an analogy. He said if a woman is going to pray with her hair uncovered, she might as well cut her hair all the way off, go bald-headed. And then he ended up with saying, you know, we don't need to have these customs in the church. But he was just trying to make a point. Because if you go to Africa, they don't have a lot of hair. So you see, it wasn't about hair. Hair was just a type of a covering. But your head is what covers you. Your head. What's in your head determines whether you go butt naked or not. <laughs> not your elbow. It's what's in your head. Your head creates your glory. Your head creates your, your renown. Your head creates your reputation. And so we, get, we need to look at God dealing with us is to make sure that we bring glory to God. I'm going to do it until we finish. When the devils are looking at you, they're saying something. Amen. That's why a lot of times people get confused when it comes to, 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 to re relating to the dealings of God. The pastor, the enemy of the devil, becomes your enemy because you are too close to the devil. So many churches can't even preach. They always got to tell you you're blessed. They can't even preach to you because they're so intimidated by you. The body dictates to the head when it's in the flesh. When you're not spiritual, you tell that, get in that refrigerator. Get me six gallons of ice cream. <laughs> not a spoon. I want a, what they call it, a ladle. <laughs> So when the body is running the church, the head can't preach right. And then you'll have the glory of the flesh revealed. But in God's church, he said, I am going to make my church a glorious church. Now, when you look at glory, you have to hear it. Glory is reputation. If you have money and you're a woman and you have hair, you get your hair did. <laughs> right? Did mean done in the shop. <laughs> done in the shop. Did. <laughs> Sorry. If you have money and you have hair and you sit there painfully, you wait for hours that I'll suck in your teeth. <laughs> For the glory that will be revealed, you endure, you endure that couch. Despising the shame of your husband talking about, get out of there. <laughs> but for the joy set before you, because you want to look in that mirror when that beautician done beautified you, and you want to go, I like that. <laughs> And why are you doing it? You can't even see it after you drop the mirror. You just want others to see your glory. Look at my reputation. I went to Lisa's. <laughs> you went to nowhere. <laughs> and it shows in your glory. Right? Come on. So when we spend time with God and it's not visible, you did not spend time with him. You might have been around him, but when you, more you spend time with God, he's going to did you. He's going to cut you, shape you. Come on. We saw it last week with the potter. He worked the work on the wheel and it was marred in the hand of the potter. I, I got hurt in church. Welcome to the good guys club. 
No, that was wrong. Grown Ups Club. The best hurt is church hurt. At least you can see if you got what it takes to stay. Then they start saying these little devil lines. Oh, I should have stayed in the world. Well, go ahead and go to hell. Church folk need to be told the truth. Go ahead. Go back into the world. Go bust hell wide open. They say to take you back. But I'm here for the glory of God. And so we gotta, we're going to look at it really, really quick. How does God get the glory? Because everything is looking. And they're saying something about you. That's glory. You know, um, what's funny is my wife's like a few weeks younger than me. <laughs> it's no matter who looks at our pictures, they don't, nobody say nothing about me. First thing they says, your wife is so pretty. I'm like. <laughs> I'm her glory. Tell my story. <laughs> Well, anyhow, whatever. <laughs> see, it's when people see you, they're going to say something. That's why people wear designer clothes. And people that don't know it, they ain't going to give you no compliment. They ain't going to say it's a nice or, or, or jerky shirt or whatever the jerk name you, you wore. <laughs> Same shirt Mike wear for $30. You got a $3,000 shirt. Nobody care. But the people that also paid 30000 30, what how much was it? Whatever it was. If they got one, they're going to be like, yo, you got a, a jerky shirt. Yeah, man, we both jerks. You got jerk? I got jerk. All that money for a shirt. Yeah, our jerky. <laughs> and how about don't, don't throw nothing at me, please. They're going to they're gonna be mad at me when I say it, but I'm going to say it anyhow. How about the little ghetto kids? that don't know how to shop, so they wear their suit with the label on the sleeve. That's just to show you who made it. You cut it off if you buy it. But no, they, they look what I got. They want what? Glory. They want reputation. They want a compliment. Come on. Clothing, America, all these clothing, they all have what? Names. See, a name, a reputation is glory. See, and you and I were created for the glory of God. Everything that you're going through is for his glory. Amen. Angels are looking at you. They're like, whoo, glory to God. <laughs> is that the same? Yes, that, what? What? You might not look happy or feel right. You might be broke, have no friends. You halfway think you the devil, but the angel's like, Ooh, look at that. How did he make that? They're in heaven. They're like, ooh, you bad. But because your mind is not renewed, you're thinking, you know, forgive me, Yolanda, you got to keep up with the Joneses. Her last name is Jones. Because you're carnal. I don't have this and I don't have that. It's like, and God's looking at you like, you, if you only knew what you had. Amen. See, but out of your mouth, you condemn yourself when you say what you don't have, but you're filled with the glory and the reputation of God. There was a time when you were not the people of God, but now you're the people of, you don't go to church. Amen. You are the church. Amen. Millions and millions of people are going to church. But when you walk, angels said, there's a church. There is the body of Christ right there. They like to, you might want to look for Jesus. There you go. Angels follow you to get their next assignment. But you're so busy saying, oh, I don't have enough clothes. What? You big, you, oh. Last time you didn't have enough clothes was when you were butt naked born. <laughs> But you see, we, we lose focus on the fact that the term glory means splendor and height. See, now I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read these. I'm not going to read these. I'm going to quote these. You know what the Bible says about heaven? It said there's no moon and no sun, but the glory of God lights the place up. So you know what that means? 
You are the light of the world. So you see, you're lighting this place up. Amen. The world is in darkness, even though they got a sun to see where they're going. No, y'all missed that. But because of the glory of God in your life, you're lighting this place up. People are looking at you and saying, that's how I want to live. That's the way. I see it now. I saw it. I saw how you came out. You could have you could have swung on them, spit at them, stole from them. But you just walked through the valley of the shadow of death. How come you didn't fear no evil? He said, man, this rod and his staff, it comforted me. And you see, whether you are conscious of this or not, you know, and that's why I like, forgive me for saying this. When I, when I get my hair cut, I am not conscious of it. All I know is my little head gets positioned and this violent thing takes place on the hair. If I move, I get cut. 